Anthropogenic climate change leads to significant changes in the global ocean. Recent studies suggest that the Arctic Ocean is warming about four times faster than the rest of the oceans. This has dramatic consequences, such as a rapid decline in sea ice cover. But why does the Arctic Ocean change so much faster than others? One of the reasons why the Arctic Ocean is changing so fast is because the Atlantic waters that they are entering into the Arctic Ocean, they're also warmer and they're changing the conditions and the circulation patterns in the Arctic Ocean. So a main factor driving the observed warming of the Arctic Ocean is the heat transported by waters from the Atlantic Ocean into this polar region. Anthropogenic radionuclides can be used as a tracer to reconstruct the pathways and fate of Atlantic waters circulating through the Arctic Ocean. This case study is going to be about using iodine-129 as a tracer for circulation processes in the Arctic Ocean. This requires about 250 milliliters that we just collect in small bottles and ship them home to the lab at ETH. Why is iodine-129 so well suited to track the Atlantic water circulation in the Arctic Ocean? Iodine is released from the nuclear reprocessing plants located in the vicinity of the North Sea. From there, iodine is transported to the Arctic Ocean, so all waters tagged with iodine-129 isotopes in the Arctic Ocean represent the Atlantic fingerprint. It's an especially important radionuclide because it has Atlantic origins and therefore traces the changes happening between the Arctic and the Atlantic Ocean. There is another reason too. Iodine-129 is an artificial radionuclide that is produced during the nuclear power production in the nuclear power plants. And the special or the uniqueness of iodine-129 is that after the 1980s, 1990s, the releases increased exponentially. So by studying and observing iodine-129, we can not only track Atlantic water, we can also use the transient nature of iodine-129 to estimate timescales of Atlantic water flow through the Arctic. To analyse the concentrations of this radionuclide, seawater samples are collected from different locations and depths across the Arctic Ocean. And this we do during scientific expeditions on research vessels. For example, recently we went to the Canadian basin of the Arctic Ocean and took different kinds of samples for different tracers, different analyses. Among them was also samples for iodine-129 analysis. To collect seawater samples, a device called a CTD rosette is needed. CTD stands for conductivity, temperature and depth. And the rosette is a frame which typically has 24 so-called Niskin bottles attached to it. These bottles are open on both sides when the device is lowered into the water. While the CTD is lowered down the water column, different parameters of the surrounding water are recorded by sensors mounted on the rosette, such as temperature and the salt concentration, termed salinity. Typically, the rosette is lowered all the way down just to above the ocean floor. On the way up, the Niskin bottles are closed at different depths. To close a bottle, an electric signal is sent through the cable, triggering the release of a spring and the closing of the top and bottom bottle caps, thus allowing the device to trap water from different depths in different bottles of the rosette. The whole device is brought back up onto the research vessel and there we take samples for different analyses. For example, these three samples for the analysis of iodine-129 correspond to different depths in the ocean. In the lab at ETH Zurich, we pass the seawater through ion exchange columns in order to purify the iodine-129, so that afterwards we end up with only a few milligrams of material that is pressed into targets for the AMS measurement. So, using 129 to track Atlantic water circulation in the Arctic Ocean allows us to learn about pathways, circulation timescales and mixing processes. This is crucial to assess changes induced by climate change, a key research question for the vulnerable Arctic environment.